Welcome to the Picture This Photography Podcast, where we talk about all things photography and it's free. So go to your favorite podcasting app, download it. And if you're super great, maybe you could even leave us a little bit of feedback, possibly a review. Today's show is titled, You're Not Original, That's Okay. And it's about copying. Where do we draw the line? What is good copying? What is bad copying, plagiarizing, and what kind of falls in between? There's definitely a gray area. We're gonna talk about some copying I know you've done, some copying we've done, and sometimes that we've been copied. Oh yeah, it's getting real. But before it gets that real, let's take a moment to thank our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep learning and thriving. It's also super affordable. And guess what? The first 500 of our subscribers that use the link in the description, you're gonna get two free months of Skillshare. I checked out a course that I thought our viewers would like, and it was the Fundamentals of DSLR Photography by Justin Bridges. And he spends about an hour and 20 minutes covering like the really fundamental parts of any camera, DSLR or mirrorless, including things like aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. And I loved it because it was really well produced and very clearly taught, like anybody could watch that and walk away with a mastery of those basic camera settings. Everything was really, really well illustrated. And that's a, kind of a difficult thing to do, to teach something that clearly, but they did it really well and they had more than 30,000 students who seemed really happy with the class. So I would just suggest everybody go check out Justin's video. Okay, let's dig in. Let's start with the ugly stuff, bad copying. Yeah, like clear examples of just fraudulent stuff. The first one is very close to us. Somebody just literally took the picture from our book cover, Lightroom book, yeah, and used it to sell some crappy iPhone cases. The book, the picture wasn't for sale even. They just took it and they put it on a phone case. We asked them to take it down and they refused. And then they had their lawyer write us. We actually have a whole podcast about what happened. We ended up suing them, actually. But uh, it can happen to anyone, and I think a lot of people get away with it. That so was bad. That is not okay. You cannot copy somebody's photo and use it in some way without their permission, unless it's so, well, it wouldn't be so old. True. Here's another example of stuff that's not okay, and this strikes me as kind of weird. You cannot make a painting or a drawing based on somebody's photo. It turns out this has just been tested in the court system a few times. And uh, in, in the examples that I found, the artist who painted a picture actually lost. So here's uh, one example that happened where an artist painted a picture and it's just a photo of a man's head. And the painting is not exactly the same, but it's similar enough that the courts ruled it a reproduction. The, Weird part is the photographer sued for $57,000 for damages. The court gave the photographer nothing. <laughs> but they said if the artist continues to show or sell the piece, the artist would then be liable to pay more. So that kind of sucks all around. Like the photographer Dang. noticed somebody had used his picture, substantially stolen it. The artist just said, hey, I didn't exactly copy it. This is fair use because I changed some very slight little things. But it's clear that it was the original photo. When you look at it, you're like, okay, yeah, you just Can painted I the photo. tell you something? We did not prepare to tell the story, but you just reminded me that a guy used my face in a tattoo design and <laughs> tattooed my face on somebody, yeah. but he denied it was me. But it was exactly, it was an exact portrait. Like if you did a Google search for like woman green eyes or something, like I was like the first thing to come up and it was very clearly that picture. Yeah, and from a picture that I had taken, I think, and it was like you could overlay them and it was exact. And now that guy's walking around There's with, someone I guess, my... my photo of you on them. I'm not even you know, mad. That's just cool. I hope I meet him and I'm going to be like, is this weird for you? It's weird for me. <laughs> Another really famous example is Obama's Hope picture, which was used throughout his campaign. And it's a, sort of a graphic drawing with his face and red, white, and blue, and he's kind of looking off into the distance. And it was exactly drawn based on uh, Associated Press photo. And the Associated Press sued the graphic artist. And of course, the graphic artist said, oh, it's not exactly the same. I injected a fair amount of my own creativity into it. And 
this worked out a little weirdly too. They wouldn't disclose. They went to court and they settled out of court. They wouldn't disclose what the financial settlement was or if there was a financial settlement. But they said in the end, they would continue to license the Hope image and the AP would now get a few dollars or some. They'd get some money for it. That's fair. That is fair, (laughs) right? Because the original photographer working for the Associated Press took worked took a good picture of Obama. It was a picture that was good enough to be inspiration for a very important drawing. And in these cases, all the creatives in the whole line here should get some amount of money and credit too. So it's a strange line that we're drawing here between inspiration and just copying. None of these are, we know exact copies are bad. You can yeah. lose, you can sue and lose if you directly copy a picture. But also, if you draw a picture, if you're substantially inspired by it, but you transfer it into a different medium and it's not different enough. It were a little, a little more different if you if he had taken five pictures of Obama and kind of crafted his own imaginary scene of Obama's face, that probably would have been okay. I think it also depends if you're selling it. Because once you start making money off of something that somebody else crafted originally, then you're kind of like, you're kind of stealing someone's work to make money for yourself. Yeah, if you want to find out more, go back through our archives. If you're new to the podcast, check out our Fair Use podcast where we dig into more detail about it. And this brings us to the topic of plagiarism. And I find this so weird because plagiarism happens in music a lot, especially once, uh, especially hip hop music started sampling older music. Yeah. The music industry was like, this doesn't seem okay. You can't just take 14 seconds of my song and drop it into your song and not pay me for it. Why? It sounds awesome. (laughs) And so there were court cases around it. And at the time, there really was no method for paying the original artist. But, you know, the music industry has lobbyists and lots of money for lawyers and such. And they sued and eventually established a structure for paying the original artist if you sample and now if you are going to sample it's generally accepted that you would get permission from the original artist to sample and they say okay you can do that sometimes people still don't give permission but either way there is some way for the original artist to get paid mm-hmm. same with writing i mean everyone knows everyone wrote papers in school even in school if you plagiarize you got in trouble you weren't even making money off of it you just could not directly copy someone else's writing or someone else's idea there are all different levels of plagiarizing and writing you can borrow multiple ideas and blend them together and if they're not your own you still have to do your citation page right otherwise it's plagiarizing But where it gets crazy is that photography, no one gives a crap. (laughs) Like, just it's just stealing all of the time. Um, And it's kind of just acceptable. I mean, you think about Instagram and you see the same shots over and over and over again with no credit given. And that just seems to be the way it goes. Here's a really direct example that you found this photographer took a picture of a woman on a street and she's kind of sitting on the curb. She's wearing this very specific style of red shoes. She's got running shorts on and a green long sleeve, like jogging shirt. The road is wet. There are leaves gathered in the gutter and the road kind of goes off into the distance. And this photographer found an ad, a commercial photo that you would describe with the exact same set of words. Same color shoes, same exact shoes. Same exact shoes. A green shirt. The hands are exactly the same. The road is wet. There's leaves on the side. I mean, they. it's very clear they directly tried to copy this photo. Exactly. The odds of it being a coincidence are just, they're not there. They're not existent. And how much do you think he got? paid for them stealing his nothing. exact photo. I don't think he got anything. Yeah. There's no nothing. laws. Yeah. I have found case after case where somebody plagiarized a photo very specifically and there are never, I've never found one example where anybody got paid for anything because there's just no legal structure for it. Not in any country that I can find because we draw this line with copyright where copying something directly is not okay, but taking inspiration from it is okay and maybe that's okay (laughs) i think that there's also an issue with representation in photography i mean this guy doesn't have uh 
probably part of it is that he doesn't have a big agent representing him that works for a company that is going to make money from this. So he doesn't have a bigger corporation protecting him. Whereas with music, you would have your record company. Or with writing, you would have your publishing company. And when you're just a freelance photographer, you don't have anyone big protecting you. You don't have anyone with a ton of money behind you telling people they can't steal your ideas. I see the same thing with YouTube. Like, we've had people just come onto our YouTube channel, look at our most popular videos, copy the title word for word, use almost exactly the same thumbnail just to, like, scrape our views. And there's no one to protect us from that. It's just, like, you have to just accept it. Yeah, it feels bad, but our legal system has decided that it is okay. Yeah. It's weird how we treat different types of creators differently. It's also like a cultural difference because with our um, video about people stealing our book cover, there were a lot of people that were like, so what? That you put your picture out there, now someone can keep it. And a lot of people just did not think it was an issue. Yeah. I also want to make the argument that it is possible for something to look like it was copied, but it can be a coincidence. And this happens in comedy all the time. How many times have you heard one comedian make a joke that's almost identical? And I've heard the comedians go back and forth, and you can hear two different comedians describe how they came up with almost exactly the same joke. And if you hear the same joke from two comedians, it would the easiest conclusion is that one stole from the other. But I do believe sometimes things can co-evolve. They can evolve independently, but in the same way. Yeah, we have experience with this. Matt Granger and I both planned a boudoir bubble bath shoot within days of each other. And I had to tell him like, oh my gosh, I'm really sorry. You just published your video, but mine's literally about to be published. And I just gave him credit anyway. I didn't give him credit, but in my video I said, you know, we had the same idea, go check out his. So kind of like sharing it. But uh, yeah, coincidences happen. I, and I, I think that is one way to offset it, is to be involved in the community and be looking at other content that might be similar to yours. Yeah. I, I can't say how many times I've been about to publish something and somebody, uh, like a peer, will publish something almost exactly the same. And usually what I'll do is I'll write them a note and I'll say, honestly, we have had this on our to-do list for two months now. We finally got around to it and it's ready to publish one day after your piece on the exact same time. Yes, it I'm definitely happens. Yeah. And actually really funny to go back to the book cover picture again. It's a ring light picture. We made a whole video about building a ring light just based on cool pictures we had seen. And in the process, we discovered another photographer did a ring light video. It was not inspired by him at all. But again, we just kind of threw his name into our description on YouTube just to kind of push some attention his way, just because if you're doing the same thing as other artists, why not? Yeah. yeah and what's it hurt anybody to send some video? If they like this content, they'll probably like that too. And it's yeah. good to sort of share and share a like like that. And what about this thought experiment? What if we lived in a world where if somebody created a photo that was stylistically similar, even undeniably similar, they could sue you? Yeah. So our next point is, what if they could sue? There's a hypothetical question. What would happen to, to photography as an art if you could just sue every person that had a similar looking picture? Because right now, so much of the creative process of photography is absorbing other people's work and then creating your own work. And I think whether you're cognizant of it or not, we copy. I, how many photo books do we have that we flip through all the time? You know, just all the masters and we'll look at their work and I will look at it and think, oh my God, you know, they did such a great job of separating the subject by putting the light on the foreground and adding a little flash to it. And then at some point in the future, I'm going to use that same technique. Yeah. And maybe even subconsciously, I'll remember a particular pose or the way a photo is composed. And it, I might not remember the original shot directly, but it is getting into my consciousness. I'm absorbing all of these different styles into everything that I produce. What if something turned out similar enough that somebody could then sue me? Tony, that would be awful. It would be stifling, right? <laughs> yeah. I think we would all become so afraid of creating content that either subconsciously you copied or you just coincidentally copied that you would be afraid to publish anything. 
there is always a, a trade-off. If you have the right to sue people for copying your stuff, then everybody becomes a little bit afraid to copy stuff. And my personal opinion is that, especially the U.S. is not a place that has not enough lawsuits. Like, I would never say, oh, man, I wish America, I wish we just would all lawyer up and more people would sue each other. Yeah. I feel like there's too much litigation is what I'm saying. Yeah, I agree. It could completely stifle the creative process. On the other hand, you have photographers, like, showing people their pictures online. It's just someone else's picture with the watermark cut off. So it's like... Well, that is copyright infringement. Well, what I'm saying is it's really tough because you have people that might accidentally, subconsciously take an idea and, rep and like, make a picture very similar. And then you have people that just definitely steal on purpose and they still don't. There's no repercussions either way. Oh, yeah, you're right. They just don't get punished yeah. anyway. So I guess I wanted to wrap it up by saying acknowledge. we can all acknowledge that we're copycats. We've all copied... We're ripping off everybody who comes before us. Every photo we see seeps into our system, whether we like it or not. Sometimes we might even directly copy stuff, but there are ways that you can do it where it's okay. Another podcast that people have hopefully listened to, I did a project where I just copied popular Instagram formats to see how it would affect my social media. And I, I did this for like half a dozen pictures where it was just a direct ripoff of pictures you've seen on every travel Instagram where they're holding a cup of coffee in front of the landscape or they're poking their hiking boots out in front of a mountain scene. I did all of that. And that's okay. But people frown on it because we all appreciate creativity. We don't like to see the same format circulated over and over again, but I don't need to cite a source. I don't need to say that this was inspired by because it's all it's like at that it's like point it's impossible obvious. to find the source and it's so pervasive it's just like what okay i think it's like morally acceptable but creatively it's kind of sad i mean okay so there's like pop music right every song is just kind of like slightly different from the last yeah and people like familiarity right so that song becomes super popular, and it's the most popular song. It's not necessarily the best song, but it's comfortable enough to listen to again, but it's new enough where you were kind of bored with the last, like, number one hit, so this one you can latch on to. And there's, like, this balance, right? You don't want it to be too new, because people, you know, they'll kind of be put off, but then everything ends up sounding the same. That's kind of like photography. Like, it's acceptable to just make these minor changes. It's comfortable. You might get a lot of likes, but I feel like the downside to that is uh, how do you stand out from the pack and make something truly groundbreaking and beautiful and artistic and thought provoking? Yeah, and I actually feel like the photography community does a good job of controlling that because we admire those that have more creativity. And we do, when a format is common, we acknowledge it and we kind of frown upon those photographers. And there doesn't need to be legal ramifications for it when we all just kind of say, all right. That's not what I want to follow. You're not then going to become a popular artist unless you put something new in it. <laughs> Speaking of copying. <laughs> Straight up copying. Straight up copying is what we did. We recreated the painting, The Girl with the Pearl Earring. And we made it as exact as possible. And of course, we told everyone this is, we're trying to make an exact replica of the painting. I don't know. It was a fun thing to do think that's legal because you just credit it. We're not selling it. Yeah, and it's in the public domain anyway. You could literally just sell it because it's so old. Oh. Now, I would say it'd be not okay if we painted it and then tried to sell it as the original. That's clearly fraud. But this is a picture of our daughter who looks almost identical to the girl with the pearl earring. It's kind of creepy. Um, the weird part is after we published this, somebody tweeted us and said, hey, Rick Salmon did this exact same project. And sure enough, Rick also made a photo based on the same thing. And Rick's photo also looks a whole lot like ours. Yeah. So even this, what we thought was an original idea to kind of make a portrait based on an old painting, even that wasn't an original idea, but it was a coincidental idea. We weren't copying Rick. It just, we independently came up with the same idea. And that's how things work sometimes. That's true. So please don't sue us, Rick. <laughs> that would be a very strange lawsuit. Here's another good example of copying the right way. And this is 
out of photography, but it just happened today, so it seemed relevant. Another photography podcast, the Master of Photography podcast, uh, featuring my friend Jeff Harmon, they did a podcast recently called Lies from Camera Companies, which is a topic that we covered, like, last week. Yeah. And we see this kind of thing all the time, and usually I'm like, okay, they saw that it got 100,000 views, and now they're going to do the same thing. Here's the description for it. Uh, I have to say right up front, I stole the idea from Tony and Chelsea Northup in their picture of this podcast. I love Tony and Chelsea. And then he goes on. Yeah. And we were totally fine with that. We were like, thank you. That was so flattered. That's the to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That is A-OK. It's OK to be inspired by people. But it is this currency of creativity where you have an idea that's inspired by somebody else and you just share your platform to let people know. So we cover good copying or copying that's acceptable and copying that is definitely not acceptable. Did we miss anything? Did we get all of the main copying things that have happened? Has anyone copied you? Comment down below. Let us know what you think. Oh, I've definitely been copied, but I've also copied and I just try to do it in the right way because there's no getting around it. To borrow something from the tech world, there's a saying, embrace and extend. And in the tech world, that's usually used negatively to like crush other companies. But I think creatively, <laughs> cre- creatively, you can embrace somebody else's style, but then also extend it by adding a little something more to it. So you're not just directly copying them. And like Jeff did, just show love to your inspiration. Uh, let's thank our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. It's also super affordable, and their annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Plus, the first 500 of our subscribers to use the link in the description will get a two-month free trial. So thank you, Skillshare. Thanks, Skillshare. Thank you for watching the Picture This Photography podcast. We put out a new episode every Wednesday, so please subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcasting app, and see you next week.